we will cover one, two, three, four, and five usually used data representation within 3D Deep Learning Framework. Depending on the architecture you choose or the direction you want to steer your application in, you will usually fall back to one of these five data representation. Okay, let's get started. So, the first one, the most common one, and the one that I have a, a huge love story with is 3D Point Clouds, right? So, these are super nice because they are very simple. Basically, you are usually in an Euclidean space, so it means that each point in your point cloud will have three coordinates, x, y, and z, x along the x-axis, y along the y-axis, and z along the z-axis. And each point in this point cloud will have a specific coordinate which is expressed in this frame of reference. This is the 3D point cloud. The second data representation that we will find will be a mesh. The mesh could be also seen as a point cloud. So you could also have that as an input to a 3D um, deep learning model by giving exactly the same representation, so a set of points in space. But here we have on top additional information. We have these points which are called vertices and then we have edges that will link the points together and sometimes we have faces okay, defined by these edges. And you can also sometimes usually have triangles uh, mesh, okay, so that are expressed by uh, three vertices and thereafter three edges, okay. So this type of data set taken as it stands here, you will need a specific um, neural network architecture or deep learning architecture that can handle both edges and vertices. So usually that falls back to graph machine learning. Okay, treating elements as graphs with nodes and edges that links nodes. More on that in uh, the follow-up episodes. The third data modality that you will find encompass all the volumetric data. So that you will find that mostly in medical imaging application, 3D medical imaging, we usually fall back to voxels. Okay, so again, voxels, you can link that back to the same uh, deep learning architecture if you express a voxel by just having one coordinate and a volume and some, uh, and some elements linked to that volume, right? But if you want to keep really the core structure of the voxels, um, you have also deep learning application that will rely on voxel because it's very handy in a way that it's really uh, the analog of the Rasta imagery where you have a pixel in 3D you can visualize that as a voxel, okay? So if I would have a top-down view, we will have an image, right, with each voxel could be equal to uh, one pixel, which means that this is very handy to have convolution on it. I will talk about that a bit more later as well to be sure we have the common uh, language uh, settings. And it's very handy also as a pre-processing step or uh, for various um, processing in the workflow of point cloud processing. So that, that is also something super nice voxels. The fourth data representation that you will use as an input to 3D deep learning models will be multi-view. What is that? So basically, as you can see from my very nice drawing, you have a chair in the middle and all of this little uh, square, these are images. So it means that one object will be seen from multiple point of view. So basically, it's a set of multiple image from which then you will compute or get the third dimension from it, right? And the last element, which is also a 2D plus Z type of a data representation, will be the depth image. Basically, just taking one image and coloring the depth uh, when you look at the image with levels of gray, for example, so that's how you usually you find them and we'll explore how that looks onto the computer, all right? So, we can basically uh, ha have a very nice properties of the 3D point clouds, which is its canonical nature. That means that all of the other data representation could be mapped somehow to 3D point clouds, which means that if you know how to process this, then you can fall back to all the other data representation and it will be much easier. 
Why? Because here we are talking about a 3D point cloud, which is an unordered set of 3D points in space. You have no idea in a row point cloud about the vicinity of each point, the neighboring information, the relationships to other points or things like this, which means that you need a specific architecture that can process these elements. Because for example, uh, let's imagine that you represent that as a list of points onto a piece of paper, okay? Then if you switch the first point when you write element to the 10th position, that's another data structure, for example, or, or that, that's another way to express the same data set, which means that we will need to be able to have some kind of architecture that can handle such um, artifacts within this point cloud. The mesh, it's very, very nice, but usually falling back to generating meshes is not so straightforward as generating 3D point clouds when we talk about real world data. Remember, if you want to have this parallel to the real world, then we will try to have something which is very close to the sensory data, which is usually 3D point clouds. Whereas meshes, um, you, you interpolate a bit the point cloud that is underlying. So either it is a photogrammetric point cloud on which you have a um, meshing strategy or a laser scanning point cloud on which you have a meshing strategy and so on. And the voxels, you approximate as well the space, right? Um, not specifically in medical imaging, but in all other application, I will take one, um, which is robot navigation. This approximate your environment with kind of blocks, like um, uh, what's the, the, the game called? Um, Minecraft, sorry about that. This is Minecraft where you have all the world into a voxel element. What is very positive about voxels is that it's structured so nicely the world, it's very easy because you discretize but you have a continuity uh, within your space. So it's either an empty voxel or it's filled with points. I will maybe detail that a bit more later on when we attack some kind of application that would use voxels or if you, we use that as a pre-processing step within our uh, workflows. Multiview, this is very handy especially today if you want to have a duality between um, playing on very efficient widely trained deep learning uh, models or deep learning architectures on huge data sets that you will not have in 3D data set, but more on that in the challenge section to then project that to your point cloud. So that just means that you need to have a very nice link between the image and the point cloud without too much deformation, right? And you also need uh, to have a way to position your viewpoint in a smart way, which is also not super easy. And the depth image, this is, uh, usually what you will have with this depth sensor like the Kinect or other or the LiDAR sensor that will have these flash elements where you have one flash you will have the full uh, imagery and the depth sensing from this single point of view so that is very handy for example for ADAS application if you treat each frame independently then you can definitely use the depth image to do all the computation because you usually have just one return for one line of sight of your LiDAR uh, at least in the used Velodyne sensor or things like this. All right, so I didn't want it to extend too much just for you to have a clear five data, um, let's say representation modalities that you will be able to process down the line or you should be aware when you want to play with 3D deep learning architectures, right?